Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 10. Um, in this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the uh, time domain analysis for the signal processing, uh, continuing from the lecture 9. So in the previous lecture, uh, we talked about the convolution operation and uh, to identify the similarity between two signals, which is the cross correlation. And in the lecture, so this is from the lecture 9. In lecture 10, we will mostly talk about the noise control. So to control the noise in the, uh, the signals, uh, time domain signals, uh, there are several ways to uh, uh, improve the signal quality. One is the stacking and uh, moving average. And for the, uh, if you have a 2D signal or the image, 2D images, then you can use kernels. And also there are some uh, different kernels to um, extract some features of your images or the, the data. Um, so let's start with the noise control in time domain. Let's say that you have uh, this kind of like the signal that's acquired. And you can see that um, uh, so we can assume that this mm, is different color. This the linear trend with the low frequency is unwanted signal. So this this is the kind of noise. Huh? So if we ideally you have this kind of signal at uh, with the uh, offset zero. So then, how do we detrend this kind of signal to make it flat? And that's aligned with the, um, the zero, the offset zero well. Huh? And it's called a detrending, detrending the signal. And if there's some spike like this, like the one that's in here, how can we remove the spike? Right? Also, there could be some like very low frequency noise. Eh? So um, quite frequently, uh, if you have, if the equipment is not well grounded, then the, because you're using AC power, right? and the AC power has the uh, frequency of the 60 Hertz. So you have this kind of uh, undulating or the low frequency noise that you don't want to have in your signal. So first, uh, power shifting is um, it's pretty straightforward. So first, you will fit your signal with the low order polynomial fitting. So in this case, maybe you can just use AX plus B. Right? So the first order uh, polynomial fitting. Right? So then um, this, you can find the A and B. And if uh, with that A and B parameters, you can just subtract this equation from the original signal, right? Then the, the, the trend that's going up will be removed and it will be like this. It's called a detrending. And uh, if you have a spike, then how to remove the spikes? That's uh, generally the spikes are very sharp and they're very high frequency. So the, that means that the, if the signal is like this, and suddenly it just went up and then goes down and then went down and then goes down goes, uh, goes up so it would be like if you zoom in the signal and if you look at the point the spike will, will shape like this huh? so then how do we remove it huh? so then this kind of uh, like impulse, like the spikes, can be removed by comparing to the previous one. So, for, for example, if the I is here, then you can compare it to this one. And if the change in the amplitude is less than some value, then you can say that oh, it's not still the spike. Huh? But if the the next one is uh, increasing really fast, 
so that the if this is the i and i plus one if the u i plus one is much much larger than u i then you can assume that that's a spike right so then uh, you can set up this kind of a like, conditional statement here the if the u minus u minus i so it's like here eh? i plus one and the i here i can we can change it mm. x u minus x u minus one right? and the, the absolute value of this one because the uh, spike can be negative huh? this one is bigger than some value it doesn't have to be 0 0.2 right this is just arbitrary number chosen then you can choose um, this one and this one and get the average of it so here so in this case the spikes are just the one point huh? So dun 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 and goes up dun 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 goes up dun 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 so then it will be like this kind of spike and you're taking this point and this point and this point right and if the x u minus x u i is bigger than some value. Uh, you can replace the x u with the x u minus one plus x u plus one over over two. So you're taking these two and getting average and bring it down to this level. So that's how you do the uh, the spec removal. So actually, it's gonna this kind of conditional uh, statement can be different depending on the uh, uh, time interval or the sampling interval of your signal and the the shape of the spike right? it could be negative and positive and uh, even though it's a spike you may have some with this of it huh? okay the stacking stacking is um, simply it's just um, averaging the signals so i value of the average stack signal xi average is a good predictor of the true value xi true so this it's very effective for the ergodic signal with ambient noise or the random noise eh? so the standard deviation of the average of n signal depends on the standard deviation of the noise sigma and the decrease with the square root of n so as you get the more sample it means that you have reduction in noise eh? um, let's see how it works so actually this is the kind of a sinusoidal signal that's attenuating and you can see here right and I can remove it later. Um, yeah. And you can add the, uh, some random noise there with some failure alpha. Right? So then this is the original signal here. Then if you just add the x1 plus x2 over 2 for the i signal then that's the average I signal let's use X. so this is when you stack two signals and if you do that more with the uh, multiple signal like four signals and a signal and as you um, average more signal and uh, increase the number of the signals to be averaged then you can see that noise is removed huh? so it's more clear now huh? it's called the stacking okay. stacking means that uh, stacking is effective when you guarantee that the signal does not vary with time so 
when you measure the signal, when you acquire the signal now, or you acquire the signal one second later, you acquire the signal like one hour later, um, it doesn't change. But only the ambient noise, which is the stochastic, uh, it, that noise changes. Huh? So it cancels out as you uh, average more and stack more. Okay, um, and the next method is called the moving average. Uh, in Korean, it's 이동평균. And the equation is like this. So, um, let's... So, Kp is the kernel number. Kernel weight. And x is the value. Um, let me explain with this concept here. Yep. So, let's say that the, you have this kind of the signal. So, this blue dots are the data, the samples that you took from the signal. And when you do the averaging, you're taking i signal, let's say that the fifth one here. And to get the filtered signal, you're averaging before and after the signals. Okay. So two, two, if you use the corner like this, one, two, two, one, one, then x3 times 1 plus 2 times x4 plus 2 times x5 plus 1 times xc plus um, x1 times x7 and divided by the numbers in here, the sum of the number. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, which is 7. And this becomes the uh, x5. Right? Here. And you're moving this kernel one by one, so you're applying now to this 5 signal. Right? And then you're applying it here, another this 5 signal. And then next, and then next, and you're moving the kernels like this. And it's called the moving average. So then you can choose whatever the corner you like and you can have just the corner that's evenly weighted. One, 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 right? Or you can have some weighted corner. Like three, two, two, one, 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 one. Things like this. Huh? So then, how do we design the corner? How long this corner should be? If it's too short, then there's no effect because if you have like just only three corners, then the, it's gonna be, um, you know, the noise won't be removed that much. Huh? If it's too long, then what you do is that you are killing the tail, the first part and the tail part of it, and also. You're killing the uh, some variation. It's gonna be smoothed out. So if you have the signals like this, then it's gonna be like more like this huh? after the uh, moving average, huh? because that the the former the flat part is affecting the um, the average value. So if you look at the equation again here. So for the ice signal, right? And y i is what? Let's say that the m is. Mm, so we are doing the kernel, the size seven. So then P here is 7 minus 1 over 2, so it's, that's minus 3. Um, here is plus 3, right? So, okay, P, X, I plus P. So then in this case, um, Y, I, 
will be mm. so let's say that the kernel has the uh, just uni it was all uh, so seven of them one two three four five six seven then y i will be um, x i x i plus one x i plus two x i plus three and x i minus three x i minus two plus x i minus one and divided by the seven okay. so this uh, just the example when the corner size is seven and uh, all the corner weight is even uniformly distributed so <clears throat> Say um, this is the uh, original signal with some noise, and when you apply this central kernel, so also was the length of the kernel: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Kernel size is eleven, and when you apply that, it you no know, noise has removed a little bit. And the interesting thing is that, that you have a more weight at the center, and the less weight in the um, as you go further away from the 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 number the ice number and the uh, even kernel is just the one huh? and then the, it was for this type of noise the even kernel was more effective but it won't be always true for the, uh, the different kinds of signals huh? if you have a different noise okay um, and we can do the same uh, moving average and using some kernel filtering in image like if you take a picture a black and white picture or like a jpg um like rgb pictures uh, it's a 2d data and instead of just a one array of this kind of kernel you can have kernel that looks like a matrix right And you can, uh, so this will be uh, some kind of a magnifying glass, no magnifying lens uh, to look at the, uh, the image that you uh, you are interested in. Uh. So then the value here, x i plus i, k minus 2, i k, i minus 1 k, okay, minus 2 i k. So this is the Just the expanded form of this matrix, and the concept is you can apply this kind of kernel as you're moving. Let's say that this is the three by three kernel, and you're moving one pixel by one pixel, and having this one first. Huh? So for the first kernel that's in here. We have a first kernel and the average vi value will be assigned here okay. so next kernel doing it the average value will be assigned here and uh, one of the kernel that people used or the smoothing technique is called the Laplacian smoothing because it's uh, derived from the Laplace equation. I think the, um, you, you're familiar with this kind of equation if you learn the CPG analysis. So then um, also there are some filters, the special filter that can detect, help you de uh, find the edge of your picture or object in the picture, in the images. Um, Say that this kind that we have an image with the, uh, the white background and the uh, black square in here. So then when you look at the um, um, grayscale value, the value, um, the white is 0 and the black is will be, let's say that maybe 206 if it's 8-bit, 200, uh, 255 uh, if it's 8-bit image. So then abruptly it has a it the value increases 
at the edge here right and also it decreases at the other edge here so this is what the vertical edge right this is and this will be horizontal edge then can we detect and when we detect the edge we want to have only the uh, edge of it and then uh, make the uh, inside just a white background again so then we can get the derivative of this um, grayscale value variation for this uh, row and then it will show you some spike there so especially when there's abrupt change so it increased by a lot then the that the slope of the increasing uh, value will be the uh, derivative uh, first order derivative and then also when it decreases another the first order derivative will be like that one and um, to detect this kind of edge we can use we can design from here we can you know it inspires to design the corner like this one zero minus one so how does it work um, let's say that uh, from 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 zero and one 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 zero 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 so this is the value that um, maybe it could be two two 255 but it doesn't matter that much so then let's say that this corner is here then the x value will be what x 1 minus uh, i minus 1 plus x i plus 1 over 2 so here and here is not changing so it will be just a uh, 0 right but what about here so now xi minus 1 is 0 and xi plus 1 is 255 right minus over 2 so this value will be very high right? maybe like 120 what 127.5 minus huh? so then when it goes from here 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 also it will show you um, it will be just a zero because it's the 255 minus 255 huh? so it only detects some value other than that it will be all zeros so around here Right? when the kernel passes this three value so that's how you detect the, uh, the edge mm. so in the images it kind of shows a um, clear picture better it's original image and if you use the three by three kernel uh, it move the, you, you move the kernel like column by column and row by row and uh, get the um, the pixel value for the center position and there are different type of kernel smoothing and the Laplacian smoothing and vertical smoothing and horizontal smoothing so you can see that here uh, it's diagonally symmetric also this one is symmetric but this one is symmetric vertically and this one is symmetric horizontally with the horizontal axis and the uh, vertical edge direction is the 1 minus 1 1 uh, 1 0 minus 1 1 0 minus 1 1 0 minus 1 and horizontal edge detection is you know, it's flipped by like 90 degree and the result will be like this if you have original image like this and if you smooth uh, the result will be like this Laplacian smoothing and vertical edge detection and horizontal edge detection and thresholding. Interesting, uh, the difference between the vertical edge and the horizontal edge detection is you can see that the, in the horizontal edge detection it detects the horizontal like eye line, but in the vertical it didn't capture that. Huh? 
and uh, when you look at the uh, the shaft here the tripod and here it's more uh, it's vertical so it's more effectively captured in the, uh, the vertical edge detection corner not uh, not effective in the horizontal edge connection corner okay thank you that's the end of this lecture time